Hi. I want to spend a little bit of time talking with you about components of vectors, and very specifically the types of questions you'll do where you have something like a boat crossing a river. Because a lot of times people get mixed up with these questions when they see them on you know, a question, a textbook, a test, it's whatever. They're really not that bad though once you get used to them, once you get used to thinking about how they're set up. There's a pretty basic set of rules. So I'm going to go through a pretty uh, standard question with you where we're going to look at a boat that's crossing a river and how much time it would take to get across the river, what sort of speed you would as an observer see on the uh, shore of the river, things like that. So imagine the sort of diagram that you had for the uh, question that I've drawn out in the notes. Okay? You have a boat that's starting on this side right over here. And the guy in this boat really doesn't know what's going on. He never studied physics. And he doesn't take into account the fact that this boat is going to get pushed upstream by the river actually moving. Now, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to say that the river itself is moving this way up at 3 meters per second. Okay. Now, at the same time that the river is going up this way at 3 meters per second, the poor guy that doesn't know anything about rivers moving points his boat straight across the river so that it moves at 4 meters per second. Okay? So he's trying to go this way. The river is going this way. Where is he going to end up going? Like this. Now, if I take this and I just kind of slide it over a little bit to make this look a bit nicer, you'll see that this is pretty much components of vectors. We have a vector here plus another vector here. These two vectors are being added head to tail. And we've got our resultant right here. Now, I can start asking you all sorts of questions. I can ask you things like, if I was standing on the shore, how would I measure him being shoved around? What angle is he going to be going off at? Well, you figure out this angle here. You always want to start where the resultant has its uh, tail, where the resultant starts. So I'll measure this angle here. Probably use tangent, because I, I can go from this angle, tangent, opposite, over adjacent. 3 divided by 4. You'll get 0.75 on your calculator. Don't forget to hit inverse tan. and Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. And you'll get an angle for this one of, I think it's roughly about 37 degrees or so. Okay. Now you know that's 37 degrees. You've got both of these sides. Okay, great. These are velocities. This is telling you how fast he's going. But I want to know when I'm standing on the side of the shore how fast I'm going to see him going. That would be this resultant, right? Because that's what he's actually going to be doing. So probably you'd end up using, in this case, I'd suggest Pythagoras, because you've got two sides of a 90 degree triangle looking for the resultant, which is the hypotenuse. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. You're going to find that his speed at this 37 degree angle is going to be about 5 meters per second. Okay. Now, some of the other questions I'll usually ask would be things along the lines of, uh, first of all, how long does it take for him to get across the river? Well, let's say I told you that from riverbank to riverbank is a distance of 20 meters. You've got these three velocities, and you've got to decide which one of those velocities you're going to use to figure out how long it takes to cover a distance of 20 meters. Now, a lot of times people make a very big error. They say, well, Clifford was asking me to calculate this resultant, so that must be the number I have to use. Not at all. Sometimes it might be, but it doesn't have to be. Instead, I look at this and I say to myself, what is the vector that I have in this triangle that is a velocity vector that points exactly in the same direction that I'm traveling? Well, I'm traveling straight across the river 20 meters. That's the distance I want to cover. I use the vector that points straight across, 4 meters per second. If he can row at 4 meters per second in still water, water that's not moving, it doesn't matter if the river starts shoving him downstream or upstream or whatever, if he can row straight across at 4 meters per second and that's the direction he's traveling, 4 meters per second is the velocity I'll use. So I know the distance, 20 meters. I know the velocity, 4 meters per second. V equals d over t. Solved for t. 
you'll basically be taking 20 divided by 4. It takes them 5 seconds to go across this river. Another question I might ask you is, how far downstream can I expect this guy to get shoved by all this water? Well, which vector is pointing straight downstream or upstream, whatever you want to call it? In this one right here, the one that's 3 meters per second going straight up. Okay, that's the one that's actually going to make him move away from where he wants to go. So I could ask you even um, if he was aiming for a dock that's over here, how far away is he going to be when he gets to the other shore? Okay, he's moving this way at 3 meters per second. So 3 meters per second this way. And it's taking him five seconds to get across the river. We just figured that out. Three meters per second for five seconds, 15 meters. Three times five is 15. Again, you're using the formula V equals D over T. Okay? So with some pretty basic information, we can figure out things like how far downstream will he be? How long does it take him to cross the river? A person on the bank, what angle will they see him going off at? What velocity will they see him moving at? Things like that. There's all sorts of different combinations of questions you can do like this. So you want to go through some of the questions in the textbook and make sure you can handle them. Good luck.